we need to put ourselves in the place of other animals and think about how we treat them. So yes, we should treat all animals equally. We would abrogate our responsibility as the only apex predator left in our ecosystem. We will have a huge impact on other species. Any positive approach towards the welfare of animals will always bring negative consequences. What we need to answer here is to see animals, all other animals, humans included, in their own, within their own needs and requirements. Hello and welcome to this morning's debate, Humans and Other Animals. I'm your host, Miriam Francois. Many think fur coats immoral and yet are happy to wear leather shoes. We fiercely protect tigers and pandas from extinction, while thousands of vital insect species get notably less attention and concern. Many claim to be concerned about the welfare of animals, but is it the cute and the charismatic that come first? The others are largely an afterthought. Should we end this hypocrisy by treating animal species equally, however difficult this might be? Should biodiversity be an end in itself and the basis for intervention? Or are we right to make distinctions based on the value we attach to the species along with the accident of human desire, fashion and aesthetic? Well, to discuss this and much more, I'm joined by a wonderful panel. Um, kicking off this morning will be Melanie Challenger, who is a writer, poet and podcaster who researches the relationship between humans and the natural world. Next up, we have Raymond Tallis. Uh, Ray is a philosopher, poet, neuroscientist and physician whose philosophical writing has been informed by his medical expertise. Next, we have Jamie Blackett. Jamie is a farmer, author, politician, and journalist who writes about rural life and politics for papers like The Telegraph and The Spectator. And last but certainly not least, we have Kay Peggs. Kay is a professor of sociology at Kingston University and a fellow of the Oxford Center for Animal Ethics, who argues for non-human animals being accepted into the scope of sociological studies should we treat humans and all animals equally? If we kick off with Kay. Um, well, there's a tension in the question because humans are animals. So I think we should treat all animals equally and that includes humans and other animals. And the question does recognise that there are differences among non-human animals and that is really important because it's a huge number of um, different species. And if we don't treat all animals equally, then we're being speciesist, which means that we're looking at the interests of one species and they're overriding the interests of the greater interests of other species. And those species are often devalued in one way or another. So how do we decide on how to treat others? Well, one way to do it is to think about this morally, and which means that we need to um, think about interests that are broader than our own, broader than ours individually. And we can draw on John Rawls's idea of the theory of justice here and the, the veil of influence. What would we want the world to be like if we didn't know who we were? So we're born into the world, we're individuals, but we don't know who we are. Am I a worm, am I an ant, am I a human? So how do I want the world, world to be? And this means I move away from the bias of thinking about myself and thinking about myself as human. And so in order to think about treating all animals equally, human and non-human animals, we need to put ourselves in the place of other animals and think about how we treat them. So yes, we should treat all animals equally. Thank you. Uh, Jamie, should we treat humans and all animals equally? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, as a farmer, this is very real for me. It's not just a dry academic question. Uh, we have something like 800 cattle here, and I'm also responsible for the biodiversity on this farm. I think if you took that question to its logical conclusion, uh, you would have to stop farming livestock uh, animals, and that would have very profound uh, impact on our ecosystem. I'm also an arable farmer and uh, the, the arable 
part of my farm is effectively a desert for wildlife. Uh, we're growing plant-based foods. Sounds wonderful, but uh, if you l look at that part of the farm compared to the, the the other part of the farm where we've got cattle grazing, it's covered in birds and uh, small mammals. And uh, I think, you know, you, we as humans have to accept that we are the, the top of the the food chain. And if we if we sort of bunk out of that, then that has very profound uh, effects on our ecosystem. And the other thing, as far as the biodiversity is concerned, uh, if we treated all animals as equal, then we would uh, abrogate our responsibility as the only apex predator left in our ecosystem. I believe that all animals should be treated with respect and humanity, uh, but I, I don't believe that all animals should be viewed as equal, or certainly that humans should be viewed as equal to all animals. Thank you so much. Raymond Tallis, should we treat humans and all animals equally? Um, I'm knocking on a bit now, and yet I still don't know what kind of creature I am. I'm pretty sure I'm not a soul or an angel, but I don't think I'm a beast. Or rather, there's a big, huge gap between me and even my nearest primate kin, chimpanzees or whatever. So it's important to think about what's in the gap, and I know we're going to talk about that in due course, but it would include a thousand cognitive handshakes that make the fabric of shared lives and form the basis for our normative sense, our complex sense of ought expressed in the notion of explicit rights and duties, duties that extend beyond our immediate circle. And it's this gap that makes it difficult to think of animals as fellow citizens of the planet and makes it difficult to talk about their rights any more than we would talk about their duties. For example, the duty of predators not to prey on their prey. More generally, our differences raise questions about how the treatment of animals should differ from the treatment of other people. Now, the foundation of morality is we shouldn't treat our fellow humans purely instrumentally, as means for an end, but as ends in themselves. But this couldn't guide us in our treatment of animals. So we have to think of criteria we apply to judging the uses of animals as dinner, as a material for handbags, as beasts of burden, and so on and so forth. But beyond this is also the wider issue of our treatment of nature. And for example, the environmental consequences of farming such as the greenhouse gases that come from the rear end of cows. And there is the question of whether the lives of animals subordinated to human use, as in farming, farming are worse than those they have in the wild. And that is not very clear. So I hope I persuaded you that the question is even more difficult uh, than it might have seemed at first sight. Uh, Melanie Challenger, should we treat humans and all animals equally? In what ways are we going to treat them equally is what, what we need to answer first. And there's a great um, story uh, in, in Taoism, um, which is of the Marquis of Blue. Now, a seabird arrives at the court and it's very, very unwell. And the Marquis says, well, give it entertainment, give it wine, give it meat. And he, and he will recover. So this goes on for three days. They treat the seabird as they think that we would, how, how we would like to be treated. And of course the seabird dies because what the seabird needed was the things that it requires itself for its own flourishing. So I think what we need to answer here is not to see other, um, to see animals, all other animals, humans included, in their own, within their own needs and requirements. And so what, where the equality comes from, firstly, could be from a position of how we're framing them. So are we looking, we can look on all other, all beings as moral subjects, for instance, but we don't have to see all other animals as uh, moral agents. We can see all other animals as owed their own respect at a baseline, but we don't have the same duties that follow from that. The duties will be in response to the needs of those animals themselves. And so, no, if we're going to treat other animals the same equally, we have to ask the question first, in, in what way would, would they be requiring us to treat them in the same way as us? And what we will find is if we follow from that, 
we'll have lots of different ways in which we can interact with lots of different species that are respectful of the differences that there are across all of the taxa. Melanie Chandra, thank you for that. So now we're going to open up to our first theme of the debate, which is how are humans different from animals? I know. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.